SAMHSA has, for many, many years, focused on the issue of co-occurring disorders. And what we mean by co-occurring disorders is the existence of two disorders, basically, in one individual. That is, an individual with substance abuse disorder or addictive disorder may have a mental illness, or someone with a mental illness may have a substance abuse or addictive disorder. I came in like a zombie. Mm -hmm. My depression was so bad. Drinking to, to, to dull everything, to dull the pain. I'll stop taking my medication, and then eventually, I'll go back to using drugs. I was like on a roller coaster, relapse after relapse after relapse. And nobody ever gave me, told me what was going on. They just kept me the 72 hours and let me go. I realized that my addictions and things that I dealt with had to do with mental illness. I wish I would have knew about the programs that are <clears throat> out there for co-occurring. We know that 8.9 million people experience co-occurring mental health and substance use disorders in the United States. Less than 14% of the individuals who have co-occurring disorders receive integrated treatment. So SAMHSA began to take a look at how do we promote this notion of having an approach that would combine what we know about how to treat mental illnesses and what we know about how to treat addictions and substance abuse disorders in an integrated, literally co-occurring way. Understanding that people could have both at the same time took us out of that disorder focus because it was no longer enough just to, to treat the mental health condition or just to treat the addiction. Recovery is a holistic process and the importance of treating the whole person can't be underscored enough. But it gets at the heart of what we call integrated care. And that is where the United States healthcare system is moving. Integrated treatment is a major pathway toward recovery. The Center for Substance Abuse Treatment and the Center for Mental Health Services worked very closely together over the years to develop evidence-based practices that would focus on integrated treatment. The co-occurring state incentive grants, also known as the COSIG grants, began as a partnership between the Center for Mental Health Services and the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment in SAMHSA. Both centers put forth resources to fund a cohort of states who were to increase their infrastructure structure and capacity to screen, assess, and ultimately treat persons with co-occurring disorders, namely those who have mental health as well as substance use disorders. SAMHSA gave out 19 grants to states to use this co-occurring approach. The ultimate goal was, of course, to improve services for people with co-occurring disorders. But the way that was impacted was through uh, COSIC states, working at both the service and systems level. SAMHSA has to be credited with a comprehensive strategy to bridge the gap between uh, research and practice and science and service uh, through their kind of approaches that they use. And the COSIC states played a significant role because they became really the field sites for innovation and implementation. In 1998, Connecticut merged its mental health and substance abuse agencies to form the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, or DEMAS, with the goal of creating a system to provide integrated recovery services. It wasn't enough just to add on recovery in pieces to an existing system, but it required a transformation of the entire system. When the Departments of Mental Health and Addiction merged, it was very clear that we had a lot of work to do around breaking the silos that existed between addiction and mental health. So the Connecticut COSIG really focused on three main areas, uh, implementing standardized screening, integrated services, and using data to make informed decisions about the directions we need to go in terms of co-occurring disorders. So, Jose, what can you tell me about your mental health disorder? Depressed, uh, lay in bed, avoid everyone. In the beginning of our COSIG, we really focused on the area of standardized screening. Most providers were doing some kind of screening, but they were not using standardized screening measures that are available in the field, in the public domain, for free. And when you're using uh, drugs and alcohol, how is your depression? Do you feel more depressed, less depressed? Um, afterwards, I feel a little more depressed. We looked at opportunities to change contract language. 
So effective 2007, we required that any DEMAS provider would need to screen individuals upon admission for both mental health and substance use. It's been an important part of the initiative in terms of that early identification, which is needed for early intervention for people with co-occurring disorders. Connecticut used COSIG funding to support pilot sites focused on different aspects of integrated services, including co-occurring enhanced residential programs, programs to encourage family involvement, and culturally competent programs. We focused in, in one area of the state on a more traditional mental health agency working with Latino populations. The Hispanic Clinic at the Connecticut Mental Health Center in New Haven serves monolingual Spanish-speaking clients, many of whom have co-occurring disorders. Buenas tardes. ¿Cómo están? When we were awarded the COSIC, then we were given the opportunity to transform the clinic from providing separate services to providing co-occurring services. And, and the greatest change here was that we were able to train the clinicians, begin to feel a sense of competency and feeling comfortable. Pastor, ¿cómo te sientes hoy? Muy bien, gracias. Mucho gusto en saludarlo. Mucho gusto en verlo. Y cómo te sientes? Te sientes deprimido? Has bajado un poco? Hace mucho tiempo me he sentido lo más de bien. Okay, bueno. Creo que el problema de la depresión es cuando estuve en la adicción del alcohol. Okay. Desafortunadamente, ese es el problema que uno vive de la depresión con el alcohol. Okay. Pero generalmente, por el momento, me siento bien. So it doesn't matter today who walks through that door seeking services in triage. Any clinician here can provide services. La ayuda terapéutica que tengo ahora, la ayuda psicológica, la ayuda de consejería, y es lo que más me ha motivado a seguir acá porque no he tenido otro sitio, honestamente, y tampoco lo he buscado porque estoy muy amañado, estoy muy contento con los servicios que me brinda la clínica. The Western Connecticut Mental Health Network serves people uh, with severe mental illnesses, many of whom have co-occurring substance use disorders, and they have a innovative family program as a part of their integrated services for people with co-occurring disorders. There's a group of folks here who believe how important it is to have family members be a part of your recovery process. And if you don't mind, we can have your mom be a part of your recovery and the recovery planning process. Would that be something you might be interested in? Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. The most helpful thing coming to this agency is the philosophy of inclusion of the family. One single ingredient we all could agree on as far as people's recovery is that you had some kind of social support, some kind of family support. I need the support because a lot of times you just can't do it on your own. It's important because you're not left hanging. You're not left not knowing what to do or where to turn to. We found that one of the areas in terms of levels of care that we needed to work on was residential programming. The McAuliffe Center of the Connecticut Renaissance Agency in Waterbury, Connecticut is a co-occurring enhanced residential program. We screened him. Mm -hmm. uh, how does he look? And he is currently at Connecticut Valley Hospital. As far as his substance abuse goes, he has not used since April of this year, but he has never been in treatment, he is diagnosed with schizophrenia. Co-occurring enhanced means that integrated services are provided on site. There's one plan for the individual that covers mental health and substance abuse services. And it means that integration takes place across all parts of the services that they receive. McAuliffe Center being built from the ground up um, as um, a co-occurring enhanced unit. You don't have a culture change to deal with. You don't have to try to undo all of those things that have been learned over decades, like this is what substance abuse treatment is, and the mental health stuff, you know, that's taken care of in a whole other arena. And we've started the enhanced program and we're providing both um, treatment for both of those disorders um, simultaneously. The difference here is that we started this whole center with that vision of saying we're treating substance abuse and, and mental health together. But that's been the biggest challenge in other programs trying to become co-occurring capable is taking a residential facility with clinicians, even in our outpatient facility, clinicians who've historically only ever done substance abuse treatment and have tried to change those staff, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to embrace um, the integrated nature of the treatment that we provide now. Whereas here, we really were able to, you know, we started off with a team philosophy from day one. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, and um, I had no clue 
that there was actual medication for stuff like that or that it played a major part in, in why I abused street drugs. But when I got to McCullen House, I started getting with the clinicians and stuff like that. They started teaching me that addiction and mental health play hand in hand. You can address one and address the other one and live in harmony, live, right. live a productive life. You know, data is just an essential component. Otherwise, you know, we're just blind to really what's what's happening in terms of client outcomes. Are the increased co-occurring capable programs really getting better client outcomes? So the Integrated Dual Disorders Treatment um, or IDDT toolkit has really been a key resource for our mental health providers. They get their IDDT fidelity scale results and then they can use that SAMHSA toolkit to help them improve their scores and improve their services for people with co-occurring disorders. Likewise, the DDCAT toolkit um, helps our addiction treatment providers after they get their DDCAT results, they can use that toolkit to improve their scores. These are key resources that really spell out how providers can get from being addiction only or mental health only to co-occurring capable. So it really takes them through step by step how to do this process. And from that, we're able to develop a written implementation plan of what they're going to work on to um, improve their capability. And we provided training and on-site technical assistance to these programs so that they can achieve the items on their implementation plan. If we're really about quality and improving the services in our system, that what we need to do uh, is identify uh, outliers on both ends of the system, yeah. those who are performing very well so that we can try to find out what is it they're doing, can that be replicated in, uh, and generalized mm -hmm. across the system uh, as we move forward. If we're able to see some data that shows that a program is doing well, it's a high achieving program, then I think a really important next step is to go in and do some, some qualitative uh, data work and to maybe talk with people who are receiving those services to see what's working. When you look at co-occurring, when you look at our recovery orientation, when you look at um, our person-centered approaches, all of these are not standalone approaches, but we found ways to weave them together so that they are coherent and that they work side by side. So when we look at Connecticut's recovery-oriented system, you will see cultural competency embedded within it. You will see co-occurring embedded within that. You will see gender responsiveness embedded within our recovery system. It's the recovery-oriented system of care that's the umbrella. All of these initiatives are important and need to be done in an integrated way because it's the person and their family, but primarily the person who is the focus of care. The person who might have a substance use disorder, might have a mental health condition, might have had a history of trauma, comes from a certain cultural background. That's where all of these initiatives come together. Louisiana was also awarded a COSIG grant which it chose to implement statewide, including efforts to train staff in integrated care. There are very few people who walk into our settings uh, who don't have, at least half of the time, um, a co-occurring condition. And so it became incumbent upon our state to look at avenues for development of a more integrated system. Actually, there was a, a pocket of integration that occurred even before uh, we applied for the COSIG grant. One of our agencies uh, out in Lake Charles took it upon themselves to actually apply for a grant that uh, permitted them the opportunity to be able to partner with their sister uh, agency clinic out there to work together to provide services for individuals that had co-occurring disorders. There was a new program that had just gotten started back in 99 called the LITS program, which is the Louisiana Integrated Treatment Services. Well, we all had a paradigm shift in terms of what it took to serve our clients and serve them well. What I learned by being a lit specialist was that we really did have the skills. I think one of the things is, is continuing with some cross-training from both staffs. I think we made some progress with that initially in the work we did with LITS, bringing the mental health people over to AD and vice versa, uh, both in formal trainings that we may have access to and also within the clinics of just having people over to be able to see how things are being done and to be more familiar with the clientele and how they're processed and through and what they go through in terms of treatment. 
we found out that we had a lot of things in common, a lot of things in similarity, and then also that our needs were also basically the same. But I think the training uh, went a long ways in, in a number of ways. One is just the coming together, getting to know each other better, uh, understanding the roles that we each play in serving a lot of times the same clients. So I think training in terms of building uh, our capacities and our competencies so we feel more comfortable, more uh, at ease mm -hmm. in working with uh, clients who have co-occurring disorders. We were very pleased to be awarded the COSIG uh, grant, uh, which for us provided a lot of assistance um, with the development of the infrastructure that's necessary to take us to where we are today. Under the COSIG grant, we had administrative support from the governor's office, from the State Department of Health and Hospitals. We drew upon the example that we had from Lake Charles and uh, kind of built uh, a system that was similar. Tanya McGee, a clinical director familiar with the LITS project, was selected to be the COSIG project coordinator. It wasn't somebody that was brought in from the outside. It wasn't a state level person that was assigned to this. It was somebody that actually had experience in the clinic and knew what some of the barriers and some of the hurdles were. So in the beginning, basically, we just used our own screening and assessment tools and just added an extra little component that looked at the mental health and the um, addiction. The issue of a uniform screening and assessment process was probably one of the factors that created the most discussion amongst our group as we were going through the co-occurring disorders implementation. So when someone comes in to your door, we don't really care ultimately which tool you use as long as the tool adequately screens and assesses for each of the disorders. How many days have you drank alcohol? Oh, I'd say about 25. About 25 days? As long as as you're able to detect the other disorder and appropriately treat it, we're fine with that. And that means you're a capable system. Dana, have there been a significant period in time in which you've experienced some serious uh, anxiety or tension? Oh, yeah. Okay. And how about in the last 30 days? Yes, ma'am. The state settled on the uh, IDDT, which is Integrated Dual Disorders Treatment, and um, as a result of that, some of the national experts provided their uh, technical assistance to the staff to be able to understand you know, what that model was, how it involved the coordination of services. In order to do that, uh, we found uh, Dr. Mark McGovern and his, uh, his tool, which is a fidelity tool f that is linked to the IDDT system. We put this measure together, the Dual Diagnosis Capability in Addiction Treatment Index. It started in the state of Connecticut and moved up to northern New England and then jumped over to states like Missouri and Louisiana through the COSIG initiative. So both the DDC-AT for addiction and the DDC-MHT for the mental health side allowed an operational tool that laid out all the critical domains for clinical delivery that would explain what the benchmarks would be for a dual diagnosis capable system. System. That was the overall statewide goal, is that each of the clinics would reach a dual diagnosis capable level. It's almost kind of like we gave them the test. So when the local areas could see these tools and say, oh, okay, so when they talk about integrated screening, this is what it means to be integrated, or this is what, this is what it means to be capable. It was important to kind of measure where uh, the clinics were in their ability to provide capable services to individuals with co-occurring disorders. The first round of DDCAT assessments, DDCAT and DDMHT assessments that we did in 2006, a little over 10 percent of the clinics that we assessed actually met dual diagnosis capability. And when we came back 18 months later and did that same assessment in those same clinics, um, over half, 53 percent of those clinics met dual diagnosis capability. Every single facility that was assessed increased their score. The COSIG grant actually was a key intervention in terms of being able to move the state forward to uh, understanding the necessity for providing coordinated services for individuals that had co-occurring disorders. Without that grant, I don't think that the state would have moved as quickly to that, uh, to that end. And so the COSIC grant actually did exactly what it was intended to do in the state of Louisiana, which was to provide the infrastructure changes that were necessary in order for us to move forward with developing what we consider to be a co-occurring integrated states as we move forward. The culminating event was for the legislature to force the offices to merge and if you remember one of the uh, deputy secretaries really didn't give us an option to say 
and do anything otherwise. It wasn't until we, the um, state office called for the actual consolidation of our clinics is when we really saw true integration happening. But having two separate entities makes it more difficult to coordinate that care, you know, since we're in two separate locations and such. So it's not with an, under the same roof. It's not when one counselor can go to the other and say, hey, this is, this client has got these problems, et cetera. I can really see where us having been separate and such, we all knew that it created problems and such, but now that we're all together, I can even see it more. The thing that um, I'm most concerned about, being a clinician myself, is, you know, what impact has all of this change had on the lives of individuals who have co-occurring disorders? I just want to tell you, end result is that it's working. I mean, with our co-occurring group that we did today, we had a young lady that was in there that said, I wish I would have had this 10 years ago. My goal, my personal goal, was to see that what we were doing uh, as a state and as an agency was to make sure that people got better services. I went to a rehab. I didn't make it through it. It didn't address my mental health issues at all. If you're in recovery and you're not dealing with mental health issues, then you're not getting to the root of the problem. I stayed in my addiction mostly because of my depression, for losing my children. You know, at that time, I was nothing. I, I couldn't do anything right. And I just wanted to be numb. And now I'm about to graduate from here, and it's it, I learned tools of how to deal with it. It's very awesome that you can have, you know, a place that has two different, you know, types of help, you know, as far as addressing my co-occurring issues. Integrating the type of concepts that we learn through co into our treatment benefited our clients. That's really the most significant change I think I've seen come out of the integration throughout all the, these years, and especially now that we're together physically, in a physical sense. The people are not getting lost in the cracks anymore. We're expecting people who have mental illness to also have addictive disorders and vice versa. The community likes the idea that mental health and substance abuse are working together and that they do not have to wonder where to send the client to. Now that we've combined, it's kind of one door. When we got the grant, it became the, the solidifier and it provided the language and the impetus to get the word out there that you cannot do this except if you think through an integrated lens about it. I'm not sure where we would be. You know, we've done this merger and on mm -hmm. and off, but I think the reason why, a huge part of the reason why we're in a different place with it this time is because of the grant. As the block grants are integrated, we can begin to look at primary care yes. as the next level of what we need to tend to. And this was a continuum that started with COSIG and has continued to develop. So I'm pleased. I think in the next couple of years, we're going to have a system that we're going to be extremely proud of. The system ha has improved. There's a lot of evidence that there's greater and greater capability in the area of uh, co-occurring disorders. We would like to take the lessons learned from all of our state activities, the research that has evolved in the services literature around co-occurring services integration and treatment, and take it to the point where it is up to scale nationally. We will be promoting uh, a focus on integrated treatment, not just in the behavioral health arena, but also engaging the primary care arena. Co-occurring disorder treatment works. We know that it works. We need to continue to make sure that no one ever goes without the recovery supports they need. We want people to know that they should expect and demand that there should be an integrated approach to their treatment. I wish I would have had this a long time ago. I don't know about y'all, but... Yeah. Yeah, Honestly, I agree. 